uh, back to you, dear Yulia. And of course, uh, uh, we want to accentuate on uh, this uh, very remark uh, made by the uh, uh, Dimitri uh, on the, uh, the aspect of the, the fact that uh, uh, the uh, West actually doesn't really keep a memory of its own uh, actions and of course shortcomings. So with the reality, sir, and stakes already in the fall regarding uh, the Western manoeuvre in uh, Ukraine, what do you think uh, the leadership in Kyiv can do actually to maybe Maybe it's uh, uh, to re-strategize in uh, the quest to bring resolve uh, to the crisis, which actually uh, it also brings uh, this Western uh, maneuver. We think about uh, the uh, Western hegemony that the world is actually trying uh, to defeat uh, in the 21st century. How can we understand uh, these uh, weaknesses of the, the West and, of course, uh, bring a, a more practical ideology that will uh, uh, count to wrap this? Unfortunately, there is no leadership in Kiev. Uh, the leadership uh, that is actually governing Ukraine is outside of Kiev. So uh, if there was some leadership uh, in April last year, we would have had a peace uh, agreement already signed, probably, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Because it's very clear when you just do the math, it's very much clear what is, um, you know, uh, uh, what are the chances. Ukraine is right now, um, just like Mitri mentioned in his speech, uh, it's living on uh, continuous aid and life support. And it's a systematic issue that cannot be fixed from within, right? So uh, unfortunately, that is also valid for many countries globally that um, have a GDP and, you know, the, uh, let's say, structure of economy that is just not sustainable as it is. So uh, unless uh, there is a reset of the um, um, economic system, that would be more um, linked to the actual resources that a country has. For instance, you know, the real value. Um, we will not see any changes because at the moment, when you look at the global debt and global GDP, those are the difference has reached, if I'm not mistaken, around 10 times. So there is no way that uh, the countries could ever pay off the debt, right? Sure. So the reset is needed. Normally, uh, throughout the human history, wars uh, were uh, playing that role of resetting uh, resetting the um, uh, the economic system and resetting the balance of powers. So unless that happens, we will not see any positive developments. And uh, going back to the issues related to the Kiev regime, um, again, you know, there is no leadership uh, at the moment. It's just uh, quite a fake clownship that we see happening. And the further it goes, the more obvious um, it becomes. So when you have a figure that is not autonomous, that is not sovereign at all, um, making you know key decisions in the country, the only hope you might possibly have in terms of that is that people regain their power because the actual original source of power in any country, according you know to most of the uh, constitutions and most of the uh, <laughs> let's say written sources, is uh, the people. So when you have a situation when uh, the people allow or even take part in the process of legitimizing such a regime, then you have an issue that cannot be fixed even from within. So unless there is a restart, unfortunately, there is no uh, positive forecast for that. Uh, talking about uh, the will of uh, the uh, people, and uh, I quite remember uh, during uh, one of our discussions, uh, you uh, were very uh, uh, critical uh, about uh, the collective uh, West uh, uh, that has actually uh, invaded uh, the Ukraine and, of course, uh, uh, bringing more uh, uh, difficulty of uh, m making the situation more uh, problematic. So it brings uh, me back to the question 
of uh, sovereignty. So when we talk uh, or take a critical look at uh, the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, uh, we begin to question the role or uh, the place of sovereignty as far as uh, the uh, leadership of uh, Ukraine is uh, concerned. So how is uh, Ukraine's sovereignty trapped by this uh, Western interference in uh, the uh, conflict in the Donbass? Yeah, Yulia. Well, when you talk about sovereignty, um, yes, when you talk about sovereignty, sovereignty is about uh, the ability and the uh, the will and the power to make own decisions, to be uh, autonomous in decision making, to rely on own uh, resources. And of course, in many cases, uh, this kind of power is being uh, delegated to somebody else just so that uh, they take care of the uh, issues. So this is how the sovereignty is given up um, in many cases just because, uh, you know, having it or owning it would imply a lot of responsibility and it would imply a lot of uh, additional risks. So Ukraine, um, when you look at it uh, historically, especially at, uh, you know, well, if, if it depends on what exactly you call Ukraine, because there were quite a lot of uh, territorial changes in terms of that. But uh, as it is right now, it was never much sovereign, right? So the formal independence it got in the 90s, uh, it still implied quite a lot of dependence on Russian uh, resources. And this is something inevitable because there was no such a separate entity in terms of infrastructure even, right? I mean, energy infrastructure and the way everything was designed in the times of the Soviet Union, when the factories, when the uh, production lines, uh, mining activities, they were all interconnected. So you couldn't just separate it as uh, you cannot just cut your hand out and uh, say that you can be still functional as, uh, as a body, right? So it's quite a similar issue. And, uh, you know, just like you cannot call a hand sovereign from the rest of the body, you couldn't call Ukraine sovereign. And uh, um, when we look at, uh, into those definitions, it's just, you know, a natural, uh, a natural political process. And I would add... <laughs> something that might sound a bit provocative, but the uh, the entire, uh, in my understanding, and that's my personal opinion, but the entire issue of nation states defined by fixed borders is something that always implies um, those slow bombs being, you know, buried under those borders, because it's very hard uh, to look at the historical context and say, you know, how, um, you know, where exactly this or that particular piece of land belongs to, especially if you had a lot of wars and that, you know, that piece of land is soaked in blood of the ones uh, dying for it, right? So it's a very complicated issue, but, you know, again, politically, historically, as a, or in terms of uh, the economy, uh, Ukraine wasn't much sovereign before. It's not much sovereign at the moment. And in the global interconnected world, as we see it right now, it's very hard to find someone who would be completely sovereign. So Russia is going through a sovereignty test at the moment with all of the sanctions, with the necessity to redesign economic patterns, trade patterns, with the necessity to rely mostly on own resources or resources coming from uh, new partners. So this is a huge sovereignty test for the whole world that we see happening right now. Um, if we're able to uh, rely on our own selves as countries, as entities, as uh, you know, whatsoever else, and if we're able to build effective partnerships, equal respectful partnerships that would allow to redesign the international, well, economy, trade, and uh, overall system of geopolitical relations on a different basis. So sovereignty test uh, is all about, you know, a fair evaluation of what's out there, what's out there to bring to the table and how it can be, um, you know, traded with others, how it can be complementary to each other, um, and how it could be done without the necessity to kill each other, to get those resources, kill either morally or physically.